In studio with the Vice Chair of Finance, Delegate John Hardy. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for having me back. Pleasure's ours. Uh, what's it like to get back on terra firma, my man? It was nice to get home. I uh, This session was very different and, and um, worked a worked a lot of hours so typically you know you always do work a lot of hours in session but this this was a very different session for me and uh, didn't make it home the last three weeks of session so uh i didn't make it home a lot so uh, we worked a lot of saturdays and uh, we had a lot of budgets we did a lot of budget book stuff uh, on the weekend so uh it was very nice to get home and uh, see my wife and spend some time with my kids and uh, sleep in my own bed it was it was nice you are the vice chair of finance now when i think of uh vice preceding the next word i think vice principal at my school was the heavy he was the guy that was in charge of discipline tony Cipetta was his name nice italian guy uh we got along well uh also vice president that is a person that's derided not because of who it is but the position generally yeah it's a person that goes to funerals otherwise they don't have a lot to do with what goes on in the country and the president of the united states vice chair of finance you do nothing and you just kind of glom off the glory of the chairman of finance or are you the heavy I definitely played the role of the heavy this year. Um, you know, um, Delegate Vernon Chris, who is the chairman of finance, is just a wonderful gentleman. Uh, he really let me be very involved in the finance process and the budget process. Uh, but I definitely was the guy who did the floor fights and uh, carried a lot of the stuff on the floor. And that's fine because I enjoy that. Um, that was not pushed off on me. I asked to do that. Um, I really enjoy doing floor work. Um, I feel like I'm kind of quick on my feet and, uh, and I just, I really enjoy that part of, uh, of the legislature. And then I worked on a lot of special projects. So I, you know, uh, I have a really nice office in Charleston. I have one of the nicest offices for working. It's very secluded. Um, you don't see a lot of people and that was different for me. I'm a very much a people person and I really enjoy being on the East wing. Uh, I would typically spend a lot of time going from office to office or uh, the office that I was in that now that Mike Hornby and Mike Height are in um, was right the first office beside the bathroom. So we would get a lot of people that would stop in and then I enjoyed that. I did not get much of that this year. This year was really me working uh, with the chairman and with budget analysts and in my office a lot um, working on special projects uh, with the uh, with the budget and, and uh, uh, pieces of legislation that we were passing. I worked very hard on the uh, um, uh, the first tax cut bill, mm -hmm. I work with the governor's office and work with the House. Uh, the bill that we passed, uh, I think it was 2882, uh, was the 50% uh, tax cut. Uh, I think that number's right. Don't hold me to it. But that was the 50% tax cut and the $700 million uh uh, rainy day fund that we had done. So I worked really hard on that bill, and then we got that passed out of the House. The Senate, unfortunately, did not take that bill up, uh, and we negotiated. And we did come out with a, a pretty decent tax bill. Uh, I was happy to vote for uh, any tax cuts, a good cut. So, And I don't think we lost too much leverage. Our, our initial cut was 30%, uh, with 10% following the next two years. And the bill that we got uh, was 22% in the first year. So we were only off by 8% uh, on the first cut. Uh, and it has triggering mechanisms in it. And I think the number one uh, thing about that bill that, that really made me uh, okay with voting for it was that it has a pathway to zero. Uh, I'm, what is that pathway? What are the triggers? Well, the, the, the triggers are very confusing. And I'm not real crazy about some of the triggers, but the triggers are really, they are really based on uh, how the economy moves forward and how the economy grows, um, the dynamic growth of the state. So uh, the triggers are... Are interesting. Uh, you know, it, it is a pathway forward, and I think it's a safe way, a very safe way to move forward. And, um, you know, the Senate was very um, uh, due diligent about getting in the refund for the uh, personal property taxes, which Berkeley County voted for that. So that I didn't have a problem, you know, voting for that. I think that that was uh, Amendment 2 just kind of got mixed up in a bunch of other problems and and i think people were are probably okay with getting a, a uh, refundable tax re uh, credit on their rebate actually it's a rebate uh on their personal property for their vehicles so i was okay with that so uh it's a tax cut you know so uh it's crazy that we're down there arguing about what tax cut we're gonna do but uh we were able to get something yeah, i called it violent agreement is what i was hearing down there <laughs> yeah. everybody wanted to have the, the title tax of your cut. next book there we go yeah it was, and there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of negotiating back and forth, and, uh, you know, I, I wasn't involved in too much of the negotiating stuff. I was working on some other pieces of legislation, uh, some more economic development stuff. So uh, <clears throat> uh, the chairman, Vern and Chris, and uh, uh, Majority Leader Eric Householder was very involved in those negotiations with the Senate president and the Senate finance chairman, and uh, I'm sure there was some other people in there also. 
John, uh, I want to go to the excise tax bill that you passed a few years back and was supposed to gradually increase each year as it uh, moved to eventually returning 100% of those funds back to the counties. Yes. Yeah, so where, I was, where are you with yeah, that? Yeah, we finally got that finished. So that's that's all finished. And it ended up not being a House bill. Uh, we did pass it through the House, um, but it went to the Senate. And then there was a Senate bill that was moving. Um, so I thought that was a better vessel, and I worked with Senator Barrett. Uh, me and him worked very closely this session, um, back and forth. So uh, I was keeping him apprised of things that was going on on the House side, and he was letting me know what was moving on the Senate side. So we were trying to find what vessels was moving. Um, so although that bill is, has completed legislation, it's a Senate bill, and it does not have my name on it, and I'm okay with that. I just wanted to get it finished. So uh, with the help from Senator Barrett and uh, some others, uh, we were able to get that piece of legislation done. That was Senate Bill. I've got the number here. Let me put my glasses on. That was Senate Bill 522 was an excise tax speed up bill. And there was also a piece in there that was for the county uh, clerks to be able to have some money to make sure that they're upgrading and staying on top of their uh voting equipment and also security for their voting equipment. So they're going to get a small piece of that. Uh, and once they meet, meet the criteria that the uh, Secretary of State's office wants them to meet, then the, that money will come back to the county. So the county, I would expect in 2025, when this is completely implemented, that Berkeley County will probably receive around $3 million or be able to keep. Let's, let's, let me let's put this. They will be able to keep $3 million of their own money that they were sending to the state. So as they collect it, they won't have to send it and wait for it to come back. They can just hold it. Yes, they'll be able to hold that, and they'll they'll be able to hold that in perpetuity in, at the county level. And that was supposed to go ten percent a year until it got it, to one hundred percent, but now it's going to graduate to one hundred percent by twenty twenty five. Yeah, so it was going to be ten percent over ten years, and it would have matured by twenty thirty. Um, by going the route that we went, uh, we was able to do it in two years, so it will reach maturity in twenty twenty five. And those funds are created during real estate transactions. They are. So those are a part of your transfer tax. So whenever you uh, sell or buy a piece of property, there's a transfer tax that you pay. Uh, the county got a portion of that, and then the other portion of that went to the state, and we were able to be able to retain that at the county level. So uh, it comes back to the county commission um, and is is really is unencumbered, except for the 10% that goes to the clerk's office for the voting equipment. But uh, the county commission can now use that for whatever they deem responsible, whether it be emergency services, fire police, ambulance, uh, parks, uh, you know, really whatever the county commission really needs to, to use that for. Is that fee that's charged a percentage of the sale or a fixed rate that applies regardless of what the amount of the it's, sale is. It's a percentage of the sale. So it's, uh, I, I can't remember that. I think it's a dollar fifty-five per thousand, I think's what it is. And there's, I think the county can charge up to a dollar sixty-five per thousand. And then this other piece that was the count, the, the state's part, I can't remember exactly what that number was, but now the county will be able to retain that. Very nice. And it, that's also divided up. Some of that's divided up between CVBs and uh, Parks and Rec. So there's a, there's a division of some of that money. There was some discussion in regards to locality pay from southern, some of the southern counties that if you are willing to give up your severance tax in the areas where there is no coal or gas being extracted, then uh, and we can keep all of our severance taxes then you can have your locality pay. How but, much of that uh, do you think has gained any ground? Well, I mean, it's it's really an unintelligent argument. It is. It's not apples to apples. It's, it's apples. It's apples to oranges. I mean, a severance tax is a direct payment to the county from the state. Locality pay will go to our uh, state employee. Will go to state employees. So it's not. It's it's really an unintelligent argument. But I will tell you that Berkeley County receives two hundred fifty thousand dollars in severance tax money. We would gladly. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I can't speak for the county commission, but two hundred fifty thousand dollars is not a lot of money to. Uh, I believe the county county's budget's around $40 million. Yeah, $50 million now. Yeah, so $50 million budget, $250,000 is a, you know, a, 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 just a drop in the pond. So uh, it's not really, you know, apples to apples. It's a very unintelligent argument. And I will tell you from some of the Southern delegates, you get very unintelligent arguments. And I'll say that on live radio. So um, I have no problem saying that. So, uh, you know, I gave some very impassioned floor speeches this year. And some of the speeches that I gave, one of the most impassioned speech I gave was for locality pay. And uh, we got closer than we've ever gotten before. We were within nine votes, I think, eight or nine votes from being able to get um, a unfunded study. I mean, we couldn't even get an unfunded study passed. Uh, 
There was also another bill that was moving over from the Senate. That was uh, Senator Barrett's bill also. It approached it a little differently. It it gave the uh, agencies the ability to go in and look at uh, the uh, different agencies and uh, uh, be able to do locality pay for their employees, which makes sense because they kind of know what they need better than anybody else. So uh, there's still work to be done on that but i think that we're getting closer and i think that uh that's going to happen i think i think that there's some um some works behind the scenes that's going to hopefully maybe make that come together um what is the primary argument against locality pay uh i will tell you that you know delegates that are not in favor of it or really representing their constituents i at, at one point i can't really fault them it'd be hard for them to go home and say you know if you lived in berkeley jefferson morgan county we're going to pay you more uh i wasn't able to fight for my constituents and i wasn't able to get you guys you know the locality pay and so i mean they're, they're but we're talking about state job we're talking about teachers sure and, we're talking such, about right? teachers service personnel doh corrections officers there's there's we're, there's there's a lot it touches a lot of different people but you know it, it really it makes sense and and i i also think that you know, I've had the conversations with people that the cost of living is kind of what the cost of living is. I've talked about this on the show before. And really, we need to be focusing on the real estate, the the amount of money that it costs you to purchase a home, to rent a home, and the property that that home sits on. That's really the difference. It's really, you know, a gallon of milk kind of costs what a gallon of milk costs. And, you know, a new car costs what a new car costs. Those, those prices are kind of the same across the country. Um, uh, but I will tell you the the real estate. You know what it costs to purchase a home, or rent a home, or an apartment, or a townhouse is the, is greatly different. And uh, so you know, I've always said that we could use like the BAQ or the or, or the or the BA. I think the BAQ is what the military calls it, or BAH uh, is the, like the base housing allowances. Um, the federal government has done most of the work for us. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I mean, we the federal government has done a lot of this. I mean, they they see this. Private industry sees this. So. But locality pay doesn't. Hurt hurt anybody in the other counties it just it assists those who were in the the higher cost of living oh, you're county, so right? naive john yeah yeah so I, <laughs> I am new yeah so i would have these i would have these discussions on the house floor and i would have these discussions privately with delegates and say listen um you know there there was a delegate i believe she was from mango county i think that's where she's from she's new and she said well the, everyone's going to pack up and leave my county and come to your county and i said listen they berkeley county berkeley and jefferson county are not competing with any other county in west virginia we're competing with three of the richest counties in the country being Loudoun, fairfax and montgomery and and, and also frederick county um, so those are the counties that we compete with to try to keep our our teachers not just our teachers service personnel department of high highways, corrections. I mean, it touches a lot of, touches a lot of state agencies. So, uh, but I think we're, we're, we're getting closer. And I, I was able to work uh, about four or five delegates that voted against the bill. And I, and I was able to get, you know, um, some movement on them because we were discussing a economic development bill that we were going to pass. Um, and it was a large sum of money and not one dime of that money was coming to the Eastern Panhandle. And, and I said, you know, privately to these delegates, listen, this, there's not one dollar that's coming to the Eastern Panhandle, but I'm going to vote for it because I'm a team player. I believe that, you know, everything that's good for West Virginia is good for, you know, all parts of West Virginia. And I don't understand why you can't support us on our locality pay. So I, I think I was able to get some movement from a few delegates on that. There's some that you'll never move. but I find the argument that the teacher from Mingo made to be funny because I guess my follow-up to that would be, and where are they going to live? Uh, and then the second part of my follow-up would that be if, if if A is true, then the inverse of A must also be true, which is according to your logic, then right now all the teachers in Berkeley County should be moving to Mingo County to teach because they can make the same money and buy a much less expensive home. Yeah, correct. And that logic just doesn't work. It doesn't. It just doesn't hold up. You mm -hmm. know. So and I and I, that's the argument that I made. I, I mean, I made the argument on the House floor that I have voted for m millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to go to other parts of West Virginia. We've cut taxes on severance taxes to be able to put coal miners back to work and open mines that were closed and purchase new mine equipment. We we have. Uh, put money into our uh, trail systems that are in southern West Virginia that have just completely opened up their economy. We have dumped hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of dollars into our state parks where are typically in our most rural counties. Um, so, you know, we've made uh, economic development um, uh, uh, 
stands in Mason County and Jackson County to help them with new core. Uh, we've worked basically in the northern panhandle to help them with a new um, uh, battery storage facility up there that's going to is an air uh, air iron uh, facility up there and the only old weird and steel so we have invested you know hundreds of millions of dollars in all parts of of west virginia uh and you know it's all part of being a team player but when we start talking about locality pay or anything that would make the eastern panhandle stand out a little differently they they so there's some that actually take joy into being able to to kick us right in the teeth so delegate john hardy is our guest vice chair of finance and uh, John, you have uh, interim sessions coming up in about, what, three weeks? Yes, we do. What will be the subject of those? Any idea at this time? I don't know. I know I'll, I'll be I uh, vice chair or, or co-chair of the Select Committee on Infrastructure with uh, Senator Charlie Clemens, who's a, a wonderful gentleman. And uh, we're typically talking about infrastructure uh, problems and infrastructure things that are going on. We was able to move another $177 million into the WDA, which is the Water Development Authority. Uh, and that works very closely with the IJDC, which is the Infrastructure's Job and Development Council, which I am appointed to. I was appointed to the IJDC by the governor, so I work very closely uh, with the IJDC and the WDA on infrastructure projects. Uh, uh, fortunately, we've been able to garner about $26 million in grants uh, for Berkeley County for the expansion of our uh, water plant in Falling Waters, taking that from 6 million to 10 million gallons a day. Uh, we've also worked on uh, receiving funds to uh, extend our water um, uh, mains in the South Berkeley area, and we are now in the process of working on another uh, large grant that's going to help us with the water treatment plant in South Berkeley, which is grossly undersized and, and, and really needs to be redone. So, Chris Miller, in our first segment, mentioned that uh, you remember the Roads to Prosperity bond that was passed in the state at the beginning of Governor Justice's term because of inflation and two or three other things that he mentioned as well. Only about, I think he said, 77% of the promised projects that Roads to Prosperity was going to pay for will actually be able to be completed because of how much more things cost now, including labor and such materials. Uh, have you heard that as well? Is that I, verified as true? I have not. And I would I would caution him to say, you know, if you remember some of those bonds, and that, that was actually done in the legislature the year before I got there, maybe two years before I got there. But, uh, you know, those those bonds were let out in probably about over like four years. Some of those bonds, we, we got 180 million dollars over the asking price so we sold an 800 million dollar bond for 980 million dollars i mean because the market was doing so good and our and our bond ratings were so good and our uh, our rainy day fund and you know we we we've, we've done a very good job of managing our pension so i i don't know if i would I don't know if I would hold that to be true. I mean, I don't know, Mr. Mr. Miller. I've never met him, and, and uh, you know, he, he may have done his research on that. That's not something that I've heard of. I know that our rainy day fund is down a little bit because of the uh, stock market being down somewhat, uh, but I don't know about where we are on our bonds. I know we sold those things at, 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 a, at a wonderful premium. You mentioned the rainy day fund might be down a little bit. Obviously, the markets are down and such, but I presume your balance is still above a billion dollars? You know, I'm not exactly sure where it's at. When we were down in session, I think it was just a little under a billion. I think mm -hmm. it was about 907, 970 million or something like that. It was a, just a bump under, uh, but it was still running in the percentage rate where we needed to be. We, uh, they, they typically, uh, Moonies and the rating organizations, that, uh, that bond market is a very interesting market to study and to, to learn. Uh, it's been one of the most interesting things that I've really have uh, – uh, tried to educate myself on as much as possible but uh yeah so our ratings are uh, we usually they want you to be somewhere between 16 percent 17 percent of your of your overall budget and we typically stay somewhere between 18 to 21 percent so uh, we we keep a very good rating with uh moody's and all the other bond ratings and also we do a very good job in our retirement accounts so our our out years uh, the money that we need to put aside for our teachers retirements and our judges retirements and uh, all the different uh, uh, agencies that we are funding their retirements we've done a very good job with that have you had to contribute any of the surpluses from this budget year into the rainy day fund no we have not 
that's capped at where it was and you don't have to contribute anymore? Yes, it was it was capped and we did not put any money in the rainy day fund. So uh, I, I think this year's budget was, I think it was $4.88 billion. Uh, that's where we where we ended up, and then on the back of the budget there was about another 1.3 billion. In the back of the budget, um, that were some things that we funded uh, with our excess revenues and surplus revenues. So, you know, we we are um, looking pretty good. Uh, the numbers are going to come out in a, a couple days, probably another week or two. Uh, we'll have the numbers for March, and we'll see where we where we hit on March. Do you have preliminary numbers I, at I this do, point uh, of the month? I, I didn't check my email this morning, but I probably won't have those till like around the first or second, typically when I get that email from the, the finance department. I'm just curious. The uh, finance committee is where bills go to live or die, right? Yes. That's where, okay. And you're the enforcer. Yes. Can you share one of the bills that gave you the most pleasure to run the stake through the heart, the, 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 <laughs> the stupid idea that, that you got to kill? Well, uh, this is probably going to be pretty unpopular, but mm-hmm. I will tell you there was a bill 3153, which was a funding, for, funding source for volunteer fire departments. And I don't take any pleasure in not funding volunteer fire departments. I understand volunteer fire departments are a very integral part of our society. Uh, but I, the way that our volunteer fire departments are funded is very unfair. Um, there's a uh, um, funding formula that is based off of your homeowner's insurance, uh, and it is divided up uh, per fire department. That's not based on population. It's not based on the way calls are run. It's not based on any of that information. So Berkeley County has five volunteer fire departments. We get five times the money. Uh, I'm sorry to keep beating on Mingo County, but Mingo County has – and Berkeley County has 130,000 residents. Mingo County has 17,000 residents. They have 17 fire halls. They get 17 times the money. So it's a, it's not proportionately. It's not very fairly proportioned out. There was a piece of legislation this year that was going to give more money to fire halls. It was going to be based on your insurance, your fire insurance on your home. I did not like that bill because there was no modifiers in it. There are counties that do not have fire fees. There are counties that do not have ambulance fees. uh, But yet they want every West Virginian to pay a higher percentage on their homeowner's insurance to fund the volunteer fire departments. So living in Berkeley County, our homes typically have a higher uh, they're, they're more expensive. They cost more, so they cost more to, to insure them. So we would pay an unproportionate amount of that new tax and it was a new tax is what it was so uh, I had an amendment that I put in in finance that put modifiers in it and the first modifier was it was you got everybody got one percent the second modifier was you got another percentage if your county had a fire fee or an ambulance fee and then the third modifier was if you were one of the six most populated counties you got the third modifier so that was passed out of finance begrudgingly Uh, And then there was a floor amendment that changed the financing from, and I'm probably putting people to sleep here, but there was a floor amendment that changed it to excess lottery, which is not a way to fund fire departments through excess lottery. Uh, It was a very passionate fight on the House floor for some of the more rural counties, understanding that their volunteer firefighters need more money. They say they need more money. But the bill basically did not make it to the finish line. Um, I think that needs to be revisited. I think that there's probably a way to fund these volunteer fire departments, but it needs to be more equitable. Um, so, that, you know, I don't, I'm not per se saying that I killed that bill, but I killed hundreds of bills because that's what you do in finance. It's where the bills go to die, as John said, and as Delegate Mike Cornby said, who is this nice guy that's here in the studio? <laughs> that's not the guy that I met in Charleston when he crushed my dreams as a freshman delegate who thought he could change the world. I will tell you that my personality is a bit different in Charleston. I mean, you guys know me as, uh, you know, lovable John Hardy from yes. Berkeley County. When I'm in Charleston, I'm a little different of a guy. I mean, I'm I'm a natural-born fighter. I mean, I've got really bad little man syndrome, and I've had it my entire life, and, and I'm okay with that. And uh, I, I am typically the bulldog so i'm i'm typically the bulldog and when i get a hold of something i I stay on top of it well mr hardy thank you so much for uh visiting uh, and i understand you have some fun days coming up yeah i do thank you very much for the opportunity i appreciate it good for you sir